As people of God, we must engage culture. Mm -hmm. We must allow people to see the faith that we believe in, that God can be the provider, that God can be the peace that we need in our lives. And you will see how that community can transform. Well, hi, everyone. Welcome to Framework Leadership, a podcast about principles and ideas you can use today to take your leadership to the next level. I'm your host, Ken Engel, president of Southeastern University. And I'm your co-host, Michael Steiner, vice president for innovation. And we are excited today to have Dr. Wilfredo Choco de Jesus. Choco has served as general treasurer of the Assemblies of God denomination since... 2019. He's a member of the executive leadership team, oversees the division of treasury. Uh, Choco also served as lead pastor of New Life Covenant Church in Chicago from 2000 to 2019. He's, he's an amazing leader, minister, author of several books, including Amazing Faith and Love Them Anyway. Uh, Choco is also an SEU alumnus, and it's an honor to have you with us today. Thank you, Dr. Ingo. What a joy to be with you guys. It's a privilege to, to have you. Now, I want to start off the conversation by uh, discussing um, your desire for building communities through faith. I know that during your time at, uh, at New Life Covenant, uh, it became the largest Hispanic AG church in the United States with over 75 different ministries serving and reaching disenfranchised communities. Talk to us about how uh, your church, uh, you know, and, and all of these ministries specifically have impacted your leadership and, and influence and uh being able to make a difference. Yeah, yeah. Well, when I became the pastor in the year 2000, what people probably need to know is that for 35 years, our church was very uh, looking inward. We never were an outreach church until I became the pastor in the year 2000. I felt that we needed to take this gospel and we needed to engage culture. So when you talk about church and community, the word that comes to my mind is engagement. We must engage the community. Mm -hmm. What is it that's hindering? What, what's happening in that community that we can be a solution to, right? I told the New York Times, I said, for 2,000 years, the church and culture have always been at odds. We were never called to accommodate culture. Yeah. We were called to engage it. And so what happened was doing that and in, in reaching out to the to the poor, the disenfranchised, the prostitutes, the, the gang bangers, the drug addiction, that began to open up my heart about what we needed to do um, in the city of Chicago, in my community. And that shaped my leadership of being focused, being driven, um, seeing that need and try to fill it. And so that kind of really propelled me to be so um, point to try to deliver something to the community, even if they didn't attend my church. It wasn't important that these people uh, uh, attended my church. What I wanted them to see was the God that I serve, the faith that I, that I serve this way, that they would be able to have that appetite to have the same faith to say, I, wanna, I want what Pastor Choco has, whatever he has, I want. And we saw, uh, Dr. Ingo, we saw the tremendous growth by just that initiative of engagement. We went from one service to 17 services on a Sunday to the glory of God in 19 years. All because we were willing to step out of our four walls and engage culture. And by engaging that culture, people saw the faith that we had in the God that we serve. Because I tell people that God is in the business. He's in the business of blessing folks who operate in faith. I don't know if your listeners or your viewers know this, but there's only two times in the Bible where Jesus is amazed by the faith of an individual, mm. two times. He's amazed by the lack of faith many times, mm. but only two times he's amazed by their faith. The centurion soldier mm. is yeah. one. Yeah. He told Jesus, you're a man of authority, I'm a man of authority, say the word and my servant will be healed. Wow. And Jesus said, in all of Israel, he didn't even say Jerusalem, he said the entire country, I've not seen a faith like this man. The second person is the widow. Mm. Oh, yeah. The Bible says that the widow gave the two coins and here's what she did. She totally abandoned her faith on currency and put her faith in the God. When the Bible says that she gave everything she had, she totally abandoned her faith. And so as people of God, we must engage culture. Mm -hmm. We must allow people to see the faith that we believe in, that God can be the provider, that God can be the peace that we need in our lives. And you will see how that community can transform. 
And tell, so tell us a little bit now, you know, now you sit on the executive leadership team for the Assemblies of God, yeah. or, you know, yeah. in the USA, national movement, international movement, really, yeah. across the board. Tell us a little bit about how these principles and ideas that you learned while you were pastoring Chicago, how yeah. they're influencing what you're doing now with yeah. kind of our movement and our tribe. You know, in 2019, I, I left Chicago to go to Springfield. Yeah. I mean, God has a sense of humor. Right. <laughs> he took me out of Chicago to Springfield. <laughs> yeah. Pizza, no pizza. Right, yes. exactly. Pizza Hut's not pizza when no. you live in Chicago. <laughs> no, 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 it's not. And so in 2020, when we all experienced what we experienced, mm -hmm. we, were not, we were not immune to that. Yeah. The general counsel. I told God, I said, why would you bring me in the middle of a pandemic? Mm -hmm. In the beginning of a pandemic, we lost $47 million wow. in five weeks. Wow. So the principle of faith or the principle of believing that the kingdom of God operates in the economy of faith, not the currency of the United States. Yeah. And I tell people that the United States may be in a recession, but the kingdom of God would never be in a recession. Mm -hmm. And so what I learned in Chicago, I put that into practice about engaging, engaging mm -hmm. what was in front of us, engaging the staff, mm -hmm. the employees, and begin to put my faith into practice. Same thing, same principle. That didn't change. Now it was a little bit more more serials, yeah, yeah, yeah. but nevertheless, God is the same. Love it, love it. Oh, that's good. And, and building on that, how can uh, how can colleges and universities harness the power of faith uh, to create a sense of belonging among their diverse uh, popula student populations? Yeah, you know, I think universities who who just long for that diversity to to happen in their schools, to have Hispanic students, have black students and white students, that, that's awesome. But more than anything, I think we as a university must uh, be able to convey the faith that we believe in into that, into the groups that we do have. We put a lot of money into diversity. We, we want our schools, we want our churches to be diverse. Right. But really, if you're in all black community, that's the black church yeah. for the most part. Mm -hmm. And so just transfer your faith more than any ethnicity. Mm -hmm. And I think the universities that are out there today and that are listening, all we need to do is continue to trust the Lord. He will send the student body. He will send a harvest to the university, not only to the churches, but to the universities that carry out their mission about producing missionaries, producing market people, mm -hmm. um, so once we once we hold on to that faith as a university, God would do the rest. Love it. So Tell good. us a little bit about your educational experience. You yeah. know, I think as we mentioned earlier you're an alum at SCU, yeah. which you've been part of the you know Assemblies of God. Tell us your educational journey. How has that helped and shaped mold some of the ideas that you've been well, pushing? Well, I'm for? grateful for SCU. Yeah. I'm grateful for Dr. Ingo uh, and the staff here because in 2014, here's how it happened. And I don't know if Rich Wilkerson is listening to me. <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he was the one who called me in 2014 and says, Chucko, Chucko, we should be in a cohort. Let's be in a cohort together. <laughs> I, said, I said, Rich, I'm really busy in Chicago. Come on, we can do it. And so anyway, one thing led to another. I did my transcripts, boom, 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 boom. Six months later, I'm at the orientation here in Lakeland. <laughs> and I'm looking around the classroom. I don't see Rich. I call him up on his phone. I say, hey, Rich, this Chucko, where are you at? I'm at the orientation. He's, oh, Choco, I decided not to take it. And so he takes credit. For, <laughs> he takes credit for my doctorate. Why does it sound like the most Pastor Rich story I've yeah, ever yeah, heard? Yeah, he just takes credit. Nothing but love. Nothing, nothing but, but love. love. Nothing yeah, but love. love. But the, yeah. the, the, the need for education, pastors, if you're listening to me, get, a, get in a route, get somewhere in a journey. I don't care if it's one class a semester. Mm -hmm. You've got to do it. I mean... Great for the anointing, awesome for charisma, and you may have all that, but the education that's open doors. Me having a doctorate has open doors to a secular setting. Yep, right. Secular setting. Yep. Now I come in with my anointing, I come right. in with my, my faith. Mm -hmm. I mean, just last week, I am talking to CEOs around a table, mm -hmm. and I was introduced as Dr. Alfredo de Jesus from SEU, and it was my doctorate that held him in attention. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute, this guy's not just a crazy evangelical. This guy, he's educated. Yep. So I have, I, I encourage my people, the Hispanic, everywhere I go, go to school, get your education. And, and it, they usually ask me, where do I get it? SEU, yeah. they're great to work with, call this person. 
So I, it's a high value for me right now, especially within my people. You have 69 million Hispanics in the United States. Mm -hmm. And so I tell our people, and you got 26%, 25% of our constituents of the Assemblies of God are Hispanics. Yeah. And so I want them to hold in high value, higher education. I love it. Yeah. Uh, you had an amazing journey, as you just shared, um, with integrating your faith and learning um, in your life. What would be some good wisdom f um, and, and kind of strengthening support for recent graduates who are, who are navigating a new phase in their life, uh, but they want to maintain their sense of faith and community that they actually experienced during college years, but now they're stepping out and and they are entering uh, the culture, they're entering the world to, mm -hmm. to in essence, be salt and light and, mm -hmm. and influence through their calling. But how can they continue to keep God at the center as a postgraduate in, um, in their calling? Yeah, you know, postgraduates have this unique tension that they live with. Uh, whatever expectation from their families, hey, I sent you out there for four years and now what are you gonna become? Right. And, and I want you, for those who are listening, you have this great degree, but still with that degree, we still have to walk in obedience yes. to the Lord. Mm -hmm. If we want to experience the more of God, then we still have to walk in obedience to the Lord. Yeah. That God can use that degree, but it may not be at the salary you're thinking. Mm -hmm. Sure. Or do you think you have a worth? Um, you, you've got to be able to walk. I, and I tell people that understanding can wait, but obedience cannot. Yeah. So we must obey. God never asked us to understand him. He's always asked us to obey him. I love it. So you have this post journey. What do you do? What do you do with this degree? Plug yourself in in a local church. Yeah. Plug yourself in. You would just never know what doors were open. Right. Just because you're working with children's ministry or you're working with the young adults and, and there's no paycheck involved with that. But just don't sit around idle doing nothing. Plug yourself into a local church and ask that pastor or the youth pastor, what can I do to serve? And, and all these other things will take care of themselves. Yeah, yeah. The salary and the, the loan or whatever, it will take care of itself. But don't just stay idle after post-graduation. Yeah, so love well spoken. It. Love it. And I mean, this is how you really expand your influence. And, and for you, what I love about the story that you, that you show and your experience, is, right, is you've seen everything from you know, churches right at the beginning to now being part of this big national movement. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's, you know, that's what led to time, you know, giving you the honor of being, you know, one of the most influential people in the world um, back in 2013. Tell us a little bit about what advice do you give for pastors right now who are really struggling to see that kind of impact and that influence in their community? They're like, mm -hmm. man, I feel that calling. I feel this vision, but sure. I don't know what's going on. I don't, the gears aren't going. What kind of encouragement would you give to them? Well, Pastor, if you're listening, there are, there are millions and millions of leaders on planet Earth, mm. but there are only hundreds that are transformational. What's the difference between the two? Intentionality. Yes. You've got to be intentional in your community. You've got to be intentional with the sheep yep. that you're leading. It's, good. it's just not going to happen just because you're Choco or whatever. No, I have to be intentional uh, of what I do. And that's what we did in Chicago. We, mm. we had intentionality with the mayor, the city council, the senator, with the different groups, the agencies that were in there, mm. the police department, the fire department, intention. We, we uh, adopted 15 schools wow, yeah. in Chicago. Yeah. 11 feeder schools and four yeah. high schools. Yep. 6,200 students. Yep. All of them got free haircuts, yeah. free immun immunization, wow. book bags, intentional. Yep. Now, what's because some people look at that, what's, what's the ROI? What's the return of investment? Well, I'm just planting seeds. I'm just yes. a seed planter. Yep. Yeah. And so hopefully if they don't come to my church, they'll go to another church. Exactly. I'm kingdom-minded. Yeah. Yeah. So pastor, if you're listening to me, you've got to be intentional yep. with your community. Be intentional. I love it. That's, that's incredible. You know, you, you, the really essence of our faith, I mean... Compassion, um, empathy, uh, love. Mm -hmm. uh, talk to us a little bit about how these principles have remained true to your leadership, your church leadership, your position with the uh, Assemblies of God, and yeah. yeah, the way God uses you. Yeah, Doctor Ingo, in Matthew chapter twenty-five, I think whether it be love, whether it be talents, stewarding this opportunity that God has allowed me to be at the National uh, General Treasure. I think about Matthew 25, 
the talents of the five, the two, and the one. And how the one with the one was called wicked and lazy. Yet in the culture that we live in, they were probably telling me, well, Pastor Choco, at least he didn't spend it. The one with the one, at least he didn't lose it. At least he still has it. And my response to that culture is, you were never called to maintain. You're yeah. called to multiply. Yeah. Yeah. And so what I've learned in my journey uh, as 19 years as a pastor, four years now as a general treasurer, that I am going to give an account. Mm. One day there's going to be an audit. Mm. Yeah. And God's going to say, Choco, I placed you there. I placed you as a general treasurer. What did you do? Yeah. Well, I played it safe. I wanted to get reelected. That's why I don't want no, 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 no. I know one day there's going to be an audit of my life yep. as a pastor for 19 years. What did you do in Chicago? I placed you in Springfield. What did you do? And so I want to hear those two words, right? Because we're, we're into slogans. We're, yeah. People are, just, it, Nike, just do it, yeah. right? Yeah. Nike, right. just do it. That requires, that's, uh, it's talking about action. And then a Burger King, have it your way. Yes. Have it your way. Yeah. Well, even that has consequences right. about your choices. But there's two words I want to hear, Dr. Ingo, when I'm all done, well done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Those two words, well done. Yeah. And so that, that scripture has me on a, on a place where regardless of what's happening in culture, regardless who's in the White House, regardless, one day I want to give an account to God. Yeah. And he's going to say, I gave you these talents, and what did you do with it? I want to be able to give a good report. Here, five more talents. Right. And so that's... So that's what I desire more than anything. Yeah. Love it, love it. And I think that's why it's so incredible to be part of a network like the Assemblies of yeah. God, where we've got voices like your voice and so many different pastors. Mm -hmm. Talk to us a little bit about the value of mentorship, getting into that network, finding other people, right? We're talking about how do you grow, how, yeah. does, how can pastors grow their impact, have that kingdom mindset. Why is that important, and what's, what is a good first step for people to take? Well, I think mentorship is crucial. Mm -hmm. In a life of a young believer, a young pastor, a youth pastor, you've got to find somebody that could speak into you truly. Mm -hmm. I'm concerned as a leader of this country, I'm concerned that we've abandoned discipleship. Mm -hmm. We've abandoned Matthew 28. I'm concerned that we don't want to get into people's faces and say, hey, you know, check that 25 year old or that 30 year old and, mm -hmm. and poor, because it, it requires time from yeah. me. Yeah. I have people that fly into Springfield so that I can spend a day with them, a half a day and been mentoring them for yeah. a couple of years now. Yeah. I want the next generation to be better. Yeah. And when you, when you think about unpacking that, what does that look like? You get it. You do what Jesus did in Luke five. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You get in the boat, yeah. you get into their lives. Yeah. Their relationship, how you doing? Ask questions. When, Pe when Jesus got onto the boat of Peter, the Bible tells us there were two boats. Mm -hmm. Two, which yeah. tells me there was intentionality. Yep. He could have picked the other one, but he said, I'm going to take this one. This one belongs to Peter. Yeah. And he got into Peter's boat, his business, his life. And while he's on that boat, he gives him an assignment, Love it. shows him a miracle. But we need to be intentional. We need to disciple this generation. And, and those that are listening that are younger, find somebody that you trust, yeah. that you can be transparent, mm -hmm. and that you can have a brother yeah. that, that, that can help you and shape you to be the man of God or the woman of God that he has called you to become. Love it. So good. So good. We're going to move into our fire round and just ask a few quick questions yeah. uh, surrounding everything we've kind of talked about. This is always a time where we can grab some practical and applicable pieces of advice from your experiences for all of those that are listening. Uh, so let's begin. Three quick questions. Michael, why don't you fire away the first one? Love it. Love it. So you've done, obviously, we talked a lot about your impact and different things like that, but you've also been a dad. You've been an incredible husband. Yeah. Talk to us about how you balance it all, right? Yeah. How do you keep that family balance? How do you keep everything yeah. going and moving in the direction? How can you? How are you both a great pastor and also a great husband father? Well, I try to tell people uh, on this fast round, yeah. I try to tell people, do not balance anything. You're not a juggler. You're not in a circus. Mm -hmm. You need to prioritize. Mm -hmm. So the priority for me was my wife, my three children, yep. then the church, yep. and my grandchildren. That's the priority. Yep. You, so you, you've got to be able to prioritize what's important to you. And because if you start juggling, 
and you try to balance, something's going to fall. Yeah. So you need to make priorities. Yeah, Love it. So good. Uh, how can leaders effectively lead their congregations and serve their communities without becoming sometimes a little boastful? Well, I, you know, D Dr. Cho taught me very well. He says, Choco, when you, when you accomplished many things in your life and you've, uh, you've succeeded to like Time Magazine, yeah, whatever, right, right. chew it, he yeah. said, and then spit it out. And so pastors, if you are accomplishing great things in your life, it's not for you to boast, it's for you to chew it for one day, but spit it out because yeah. if you don't, your head gets big. Sure, I love it. absolutely. Love it. Last question to close out our round together. Yep. What's the, what's the first piece of advice you would give to a student? You know, maybe they just graduated, they finished their degree, but they're trying to figure out their calling. They're trying to figure out what does God actually call me to do? What's that first, first place they should go? Yeah, I, I think you should get around your pastors mm -hmm. and, and say, hey, you've been watching me for five years, two years, yep. 10 years, I've got this degree. What do you sense that God has me? Yep. And once he gives you or she gives you that direction, then follow it. Yep. And follow it. I love it. Huge. Thanks for joining us today Thank and you. being a guest on Framework Leadership Podcast. Just a privilege to have you here and gain yeah. from your wisdom and insight. We're grateful. If you want to stay up to date with Choco de Jesus, you can follow him on X, Facebook, and Instagram at Pastor Choco. That's at Pastor Choco. Hey, thanks for joining us today. Everybody take care. Thank you so much for joining us today on Framework Leadership. If you're watching on YouTube right now, now would be a great time to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button so you can get more leadership content right into your YouTube feed. You can also check us out on Instagram at Kent underscore Engel at Dr. Michael Steiner or on Twitter and YouTube at Kent Engel. And hey, if you love great email newsletters, and I know that I do, you want to check out the Framework Leadership Newsletter. Every single Friday drops in great tips to be a better leader, resources, thoughts right into your inbox. Check it out. You can sign up at kentingle.com. Make sure you hop onto there. Thank you so much for listening to Framework Leadership. Take care, everybody.